Here we are at the entrance to the Residencia and I'm just going to pop in for a chat with Thomas, General Manager of the Residencia and we're going to talk everything and anything to do with the, the Residencia this year. Hi Thomas, how are you? I'm very good, thank you Maria. <laughs> so here we are at the Residencia, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, sit with me today. I'm sure you're very busy but really appreciate your, your time and I'm really looking forward to just having a chat with you about everything and anything to do with your role here at the Residencia, the future, how your past year has been. So uh, let's get started. For sure. Um, so I wanted to begin by just asking you, I mean you arrived here last year how has it been in general, sort of on a personal level, settling into your new life in Mallorca? You hadn't really been lived here before, so how's, how's that been? No, I have never lived in Mallorca, but I was on a visit in 2019 with my, with my family. And we found ourselves sitting here on the terrace of Café Miro, having a glass of wine, Beautiful. looking at each other, saying that if there's ever an opportunity to come to Mallorca, this will be perfect for us. Um, from a personal level, because me and my wife are both from, from Europe. Yeah. But we've been traveling around the world already a little bit, different continents, and I think it was time for us now to, to move closer to home. Mm -hmm. So when the opportunity came to, to come to La Residencia, mm -hmm. um, they asked me the question, but they knew the answer already before they asked the question. I really wanted to come here. Yeah. So it has been uh, very, very nice. We love the Mediterranean life and we love Mallorca and everything that it has to offer. So in that perspective, it was a fantastic first year. Yeah. And uh, did you have much time to really enjoy the yeah. island last year or was it just all go, go, go with the, with the residents? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you a little secret yeah. because I arrived uh, early November yeah. and I only started working in one month later because it wasn't announced yet. So I lived on the island incognito, incognito, so to say, for four weeks. So we really had the time to go around and to get to discover the island yeah. before I started uh, early December 2020. Yes. And November is actually a beautiful time. A lot of people are always saying, oh, November, even October. I mean, they are actually my favorite times of year. For I still remember that my youngest daughter was swimming in the ocean at the end of November. So yeah. yes, it was beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. She <laughs> Give her a few more years and she'll be She'll be a, a true Mallorquina and she won't want to, she'll go in maybe twice in August. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. That's it. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, so how has the year been uh, 2021, you know, at the residence? Yeah, I'm sure it's been, you were kind of thrown in uh, at the deep end, but how, how, how did you find it? It is true. I was thrown in the deep end a little bit. Obviously, when I arrived, we were still in the midst of COVID. So it was very difficult to plan for the season. Normally the La Residencia opens in March, but eventually we only open at the end of May. Yeah. So for me being new, it was really a matter of getting to know the team, getting to know the, the procedures of the hotel and also mm -hmm. getting to know the regular guests before they actually arrive to the hotel. And I took a step back, an approach of, okay, let's, let me take a step back, get to know the property, get to know the team in order to learn how we could work on improving possibly something for the future. But when we opened in May, we, we basically opened with a bang. Um, when the UK decided that it was okay to travel to Mallorca, business came in, it, it was incredible, really incredible. Um, the amount of bookings that we received in a, in a time frame of two to three weeks was the same as we would normally get in four months. Mm -hmm. So we opened in a rush. Um, everybody wanted to come to Mallorca because Mallorca was and still is one of the safest places to travel now with COVID, especially because you're on an island and here in, in, in Dea, everything is happening outside. But it happened all so fast that um, it was a struggle um, because obviously last, last minute we had to staff up uh, levels that normally, like now we open in three weeks, slowly but surely you grow into it. But mm -hmm. last year it was from zero to 100 in two weeks. Yes. Financially, it was an incredible year and that was not only for La Residencia, that was to, for all the hotels in Mallorca. 
but I think that also many of the hotel general managers will agree that from a guest satisfaction perspective, mm -hmm. it was a challenge. Because yeah. if you, normally you have the time to ramp up and to train everybody, if we're really honest to ourselves, we didn't really have the time to do that properly last mm -hmm. year. Um, I have to say, it was financially the best year and the staff pulled through and I'm very, very happy, especially thankful to the heads of departments because they had a really tough season. But at the end of the day, we pulled through and uh, now it's a matter of looking forward to what's going to come in 2022. Yeah, absolutely, I'm sure. So when you were here over the winter period, I mean, you, I guess you, you, know, you were sort of preparing for the year ahead, but also not really mm -hmm. knowing when you were going to be able to kind of move forward. I mean, it, was it just a, a case of Two, two weeks and you were just you had to just sort of decide right let's let's do this or did you have a little bit more time to kind of well the last minute announcement announcement from the uk came as a surprise and that happened and, and two weeks later we we had to open with 100 percent. i mean yeah. we were all, all already open when that announcement came so the hotel was running mm -hmm. so that really didn't really affect the logistical procedures etc etc but from a staffing perspective obviously that was uh, that was the biggest that was the biggest issue yeah 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 well i can imagine you so you were absolutely thrown in the deep end there. absolutely <laughs> but i'm sure you, when you arrived you i guess with the whole covid situation you were probably anticipating uh, anticipating some kind of all of a sudden uh, change which i guess everybody was yes for sure i mean it, like i said it, it normally you would arrive into a hotel and I would normally typically give myself a hundred days to get to know the property and to start considering changes. But I didn't really start counting those hundred days from the day of opening was the 17th or the 18th of May. So count another hundred days, then you're already at the end of the high season. So it was very difficult for me to make changes and implement mm -hmm. uh, new things yeah, in yeah. 2021. Because by the time that I, I, I got to a hundred days, we were well into the, to the high season. Mm -hmm. So it was really a matter in the middle of the high season to sit down, evaluate what we're doing together with the heads of departments and see, okay, and realize that what worked for us three years ago mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily work for us anymore now because we have more guests, higher rates, higher expectations. Mm -hmm. And to really in August basically sit down and say, what is it that we want to be in 2022 and have enough time to prepare that strategic plan and to lie out the ambition for the for the property in the years to come. So 2021 was really for me a foc that was the focus. Get to know the property, highlight the areas that we could improve, and then work on a plan to implement everything for 2022. And that's obviously where we are right now. Mm -hmm. So So what's the plan? <laughs> well, since we're opening in, in three weeks, um, I had a question this morning. Are you stressed? Not necessarily, it's more excitement. Um, we had many things that we had to implement um, many of, of them are still ongoing but many many things are already uh, mm -hmm. finished so we obviously want to be the best hotel that we can be um, historically or oh, last year we were rated as the number two hotel in spain by travel and leisure yeah our ambition is to be the best mm -hmm. and, it, and it's as simple as that so i i strongly believe in what we're doing is exceptional but what got us where we are now doesn't necessarily take us where we want to be. Mm -hmm. So for that, there's certain actions that you have to take. Uh, and, and that goes from a really holistic perspective, uh, from the linen in the room to the cutlery, cutlery in the restaurant, to the team that you hire, but also the way you market, uh, market your property and mm -hmm. the way you talk about the property from a sales, marketing and PR perspective. So this holistic approach, it's a very big plan of ambition, mm -hmm. but there are specific actions in place for me, for every heads of, head of department. So we're all thinking into the same direction mm -hmm. and, and, and working towards that goal, which is to be the best hotel in Spain. What's so fantastic about the residencia, what we all love about the residencia, is that you would expect the second best hotel of Spain to be very glitzy, potentially very glam, you know, think kind of, I don't know, Marbella, something in Madrid, whereas the residencia just has so much charm and you have all these little kind of um, nooks and crannies and it's, it's very unpolished yet polished in, to the, mo the highest of standards and, and everybody that comes into contact with the residencia is just um, so charmed not just the the level of service at the hotel and the fact that it's a you know five-star hotel but it's it, the character that comes with it so obviously you know you support the the artists of Dea which are a huge contribution to the the, the feel of the village and, and the history and it has you know all the paintings from the artists on on the walls I mean what what is it that you love about the residence here that you've kind of fallen in love with um, well I think that you just time. described it perfectly um, yeah. 
if you're looking for gold and marble, La Residencia is not your place. Mm -hmm. What I was obviously told before um, the season opened is that the relationship that we have with, with the local community, with Dea, but also with our regular guests, is something incredible. And, and I noticed that even before we opened, I said that I was in contact with some of our regular guests. We were WhatsApping, calling, emailing. So the day that they then arrived didn't feel like it was the first time that I met them. Uh, I've seen guests that arrive, uh, arrived um, hugging and kissing the receptionist because they were so emotional to be back at La Residencia, yeah. the property where they have been coming for the last 30 years. After that, they would move into the lobby and take the same family picture that they would have that they took over the last 30 years with the entire family. So that's really important, that relationship that we have with, uh, with, with our guests. I think in general, whether you are a backpacker that comes from the bus from Valdemosa or you're uh, heads of state in La Residencia or in Dea, people treat you the same way. Yeah. So everybody comes here to escape the busyness and to be who they want to be mm -hmm. and not being followed or harassed by whoever. Um, I think this is one of the things that appeals to La Residencia so much and also to me. I mean, the relationships now, I have guests on, on the WhatsApp, on Instagram, they follow my stories, I follow them. So that relationship is really something special. And I think that there are not many hotels in Spain that can actually say that. Absolutely, relationship is, is incredible to have that with, with, with guests. And, and that's, I guess, what brings people back every time is they feel that connection. Um, well, to you and, and to the village, and they love to support, to, to feel like they're, they're supporting the, the, the community that, mm -hmm. that makes Dea, I guess. But it's very important that you mentioned that because you say community, you say Dea. La Residencia is part of Dea, um, and we really feel it like that, and that's something that we try to maintain. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we work with artists in the hotel, mm -hmm. but we have certain experiences that we try to organize to basically merge the guests into the village. Yeah like our, our weekly walk and talk tour that we do with Cecily Sheridan, which we are currently upgrading even more so that she can take our guests into the town, introduce them to the artists that you mm -hmm. find in town. Um, we in, uh, invite them as well to our weekly guest cocktail on the lawn where they can display their art and then get in, in touch with the guests mm -hmm. to, to share their life stories. Um, for the season to come, for example, we've worked together with the, the local Pitang club from Dea who have uh, created a, a petang court in, yeah. in our main, uh, main garden. And yeah. once a week, we're going to invite all our guests for a petang masterclass, where Chipri, one of our oldest team members, yeah. is going to give them a masterclass on how the game, game is played, because Chipri is a seasoned petang player. Yeah. So we're always looking for these li little tiny things that we can, we, can, we can connect the guests with the village of Dea with, yeah. because it's part of our DNA, it's part of who we are, and yeah. we constantly need to find new ways in, in, in making this, this connection even more um, valuable or, or a connection even more real for yeah. the guests to come to stay with us. Are there any particular kind of events that are being um, in the pipeline for the residencia or exhibitions, art exhibitions, that kind of thing? Or are you kind of working on that at the moment? Well, obviously we are working on that, but in the last two, three years, the events didn't really happen because of yes. COVID. So our cultural program with the Cultural, uh, for example, mm -hmm. is, uh, is, is set. Yeah. Um, we are looking into ways of, of implementing new art mm. in, in, into La Residencia. I mentioned before that we have resident artists. Yeah. Um, and while, whilst art is the history and the DNA of the property, mm -hmm. I'm very grateful to see that all the artists that are currently involved in La Residencia also see the need or have um, the open mind to say, mm -hmm. okay, in order to keep talking about the art in La Residencia, we also need to keep evolving and need to look for new things, how we can make this happen. Mm -hmm. We have this wonderful collaboration with, uh, with the Miro Foundation, but is it really something that people know about La Residencia? Mm -hmm. That we yeah. have 33 originals and that we have this beautiful sculpture in the garden, or do we need to revamp that and make some more PR noise, as we would call it? Because art is really something important for us, mm -hmm. and um, so that it, it's ongoing. What we try to do with the brand positioning is focus really on the outdoors mm -hmm. because many hotels in, in Mallorca are really focused on the beach experience, the sea, while La Residencia is a mountain hideaway. Yeah, absolutely. Hiking, biking, yeah. even tennis. 
Yeah. We have beautiful tennis courts, probably one of the most beautiful views that Best you will, you will find on, on, on the island. <laughs> and we, we are repeating our tennis weekend. We are working yeah. together with um, Ferrer, which is a very famous ex-pro uh, yeah. Spanish ATP player yeah. who's coming at the end of May to, to host the, uh, the tennis weekend. So wow. many things are ongoing. Wow, um, that's exciting, the yes, tennis weekend. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you, do you, do that, is that going to be for guests you know, um, to participate in? Do they sign up beforehand? Or yes, how is that? it will be for guests, yeah. um, but also for people from outside if they, yeah, would, yeah, they yeah. would have an interest. Yeah, because yeah, we yeah. work together with, with, uh, with a tennis agency and obviously yeah. they also they have their clientele. So yeah. the point is that we would like to position La Residencia and not only for the guests, but it needs to be something that everybody that comes to the island considers. Yeah. Yeah. One way or another, they have to be in touch with Mallorca uh, and, and with La Residencia. Yeah, fantastic. I, I really appreciate the vision. It's, 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 an, it's an incredible vision. And to, to continue to kind of support the community of Dea is, well, I know it's obviously valued by the, by the people of Dea, but it's, I think it will definitely um, be something that yeah, helps to catapult the future of the Residencia forward. It feels I like hope so, I hands. hope so. We, like, like I said, we're constantly looking for ways and to involve the local community. I mean, yeah. the Petanque is just a small, line, tiny little thing. But, um, I mean, I've met many of the day and residents. And yeah. I think, in general, with everybody, there's a willingness in making the season a success. And like I said, yeah. I just wants to play a, a big role in that also, of course. Yeah. We actually had a... Um, a, a home, well, a current homeowner who bought a house with us about, it's probably about five years ago now. And he came, he didn't, he'd never been to Day before, um, stayed at the residence here with his, with his wife, absolutely fell in love with, with Daya. He took an art class with Alan Hyde um, on the lawn. He'd never painted before. He's a businessman, you know, never, never, yeah, fancy painting, but he, he did it with his wife, fell in love with it bought a house which ended up being um, Robert Graves's old book house which we had for sale and um, they did a renovation on the house they moved in and then about a few months after they uh, bought the house and finished the renovation they he ended up exhibiting his artwork at the Residencia. So he kind of did this full circle, came to Residencia, didn't know the village, was completely charmed by you know um, the village through the Residencia, did uh, an art class and became and ended up exhibiting at the. But isn't the that beautiful? Here. It's incredible. But that, that's exactly the kind of relationships or the kind of moments that yeah. we want to create. Yeah. Uh, so, it's a wonderful story. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was really lovely coming to meet you today is you know everybody's sort of in motion, getting ready for the the season. And when are you planning on opening? We are year? opening on the 18th of March. Okay. So it gives us three more weeks. Yeah. To get everything organized, um, but I'm very confident that we are going to uh, going to get ready. Yeah. And like I said, and like you said, the excitement is 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 really visible. Mm -hmm. uh, I've met today yeah. some 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 of the team members that just came back yeah. after their well-deserved leave, and everybody's exciting to excited to go because the vision is clear. Um, we know where we want to go. We know what we need to do, and now it's just a matter of making it happen. Yeah. Um, Recharge batteries, ready to go. Well, recharging the batteries, I guess we, uh, we have done that by now. Yeah. And now it's ready in uh, operation mode and make it all happen. Yeah. Um, like I said before, we really had the time in 2021 to evaluate where we saw the hotel and where we wanted to take it. So now it's a matter of, 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 of making it happen. Um, one of Some of the key things that we are implementing for 2022 is basically as a result of the feedback that our guests have given us. Given us. Concierge service. Historically, we've never had a concierge, mm -hmm. but now we implemented the entire department. So we're moving from a reactive approach, like, can you please book me a table? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. To, listen, Maria, we, you're coming in two months. They are, July, August might be complicated, but we're here to assist you in making this process the least painful as possible. Mm -hmm. So concierge is an added service that we're providing. We have revamped pretty much all of the menus that we have in food and beverage. Fantastic. Upgraded. And we are currently working with a celebrity chef to, to work on the new pool concept because we are adding a restaurant in summer at dinner in the hotel. By, um, the, by the pool? By the pool. Oh, um, nice. The pool restaurant is always open for lunch. Yeah. 
but now we're going to open it again for dinner. Okay, so, so you'll have the, um, well, you have the, yeah, Café Miró in the evening, you'll have the El Olivo and also the, the, the new restaurant by the pool. Will Absolutely. that have a name? It will have a name, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not ready yet to share all of oh. that because that's the excitement that's currently coming, also yes. the name of the chef that we're currently working on uh, or with. Yeah. Um, we saw the need to open another outlet for dinner because mm -hmm. El Olivo last year was so successful. We had a waiting list of around about 40 people on a daily basis. Wow. Um, so we are confident that we are going to fill up that restaurant. And on mm -hmm. top of that, uh, Deja in July and August is complex because yeah. there's many people coming to the city mm -hmm. and there's only so many restaurants or so many tables available. So yeah. that should relieve us a little bit from the, yeah. the stress or the pressure that we had last year. Mm -hmm. Um, to have another outlet for our guests available. So. And will it, um, I mean, I know you don't want to share too much, but will it be kind of um, uh, more of a relaxed vibe or will it be kind of like similar to El Olivo in terms of, you know, that... El Olivo is fine dining. Yeah. Um, Café Miro is more Mediterranean. Yeah. And uh, what we try to accomplish with the pool is more of a laid back okay. atmosphere. Yeah. For lunch, people come in their swimsuits. Yeah. For dinner, should be the same yeah if someone wants to come in early for a quick bite with the kids mm -hmm. very relaxed at the, at the pool restaurant there's going to be a possibility so yeah. it's impossible for uh, impossible it's necessary for us to mm -hmm. divers diversify the different outlets yeah so with the pool restaurant i think we will have a great mix of food and beverage outlets that we can offer to our, mm. to our guests i look forward to trying it we'll have to pop by you should <laughs> you're just across the road so i know we're neighbors you can maybe you can see the office from now but you can't yeah yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> you can wave at us and tell us to come up by the pool <laughs> if the paella is ready i'll uh, exactly I'll give you a yeah. Call. yeah 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 oh paella <laughs> fantastic so i heard that there was potentially going to be um, a new scent for the residencia, is that right? There is, there is. At the moment, if you arrive to La Residencia, you can see the hotel, you can taste and you can hear it, mm -hmm. as you can, you can hear now, but that smell was not something that we considered yet. Wow. So we've worked together with uh, Viti Vinci mm -hmm. and created an aroma or the essence of La Residencia, as we mm -hmm. call it, that really represents what we are. Mm -hmm. um, all the elements that you'll find on the property here have been used to create that aroma. Mm -hmm. Pine trees, lavender and mm -hmm. all the citrus. So if guests would walk into the lobby, there will be the signature smell. And obviously we hope mm -hmm. that that signature smell, they, can, they will be, take, they will be uh, taking it home. So they're going to be able to buy the aroma, is that right? Yes. Yeah. So the initial idea is to start with, uh, with the reception area. Uh -huh. Um, but we will have this for sale in the boutique and mm -hmm. also as a, as a little gift for, for our top suites, oh, obviously. Wow. And what we try to achieve is that people really walk in and go, okay, I'm back at La Residencia and take home. it home, yeah. smell it and remind themselves about the beautiful time that they had in La Residencia and entice them, entice them obviously to come back. Absolutely. So that's a very interesting and exciting project that we're currently uh, working on or finalizing even. Yeah, yeah. And that, will that be ready for this year or will it be like a 2023? No, this will definitely be ready this year. Wow. Yes. That's exciting. Um, throughout the season, you will see activations on social media and towards mm -hmm. the end of the season, we are planning yeah. on, uh, on organizing an event where guests could come and actually come and create their own essence. Wow. So. Well, thank you so much, Thomas, for having us. And as I said, I know you're super uh, busy, I'm sure. And just to take this time out, we, we really appreciate. Um, and as I said, I can feel a lot of excitement in the air with, you know, not just you, uh, but the people that are working around here. I can, I can really feel it. And I'm, we are also super excited for the, for the residency to open. You, you see a huge change in the village from when the, the residents here opens it just like the whole village comes to life so i'm sure you know we can speak for everybody when we say that yeah we're, we're super excited to to see you guys all in full flourish well thank you very much for uh, taking the time to come over and talk to me no problem it was uh, it was a pleasure and uh, yeah looking forward to welcome you on uh, on the pool to have uh, a taste of a new menu absolutely i'll see you at the pool i'll get my swim <laughs> short ready then great let's go <laughs> <All right. laughs>